Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I was thinking this morning of last week when Chairman Bacon, you'll always be Chairman Bacon to me, Senator Bacon, uh, when we were uh, uh, talking about the Holocaust Memorial and Chairman Bacon gave his profound John Donne quote about ask not for whom the bell tolls. Uh, because he's, the, the quote is, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And it seems to me the question today is, is it possible that the opposite is true? Is it possible that any man's love diminishes me? Uh, or in fact, is it the opposite? Is it in fact the case that uh, any man's love actually enriches me uh, because they are a part of spreading that goodness in the world? Is it in fact possible that it's the opposite, that it is the rejection of that love or the rejection of that person's identity that in fact diminishes all of us because we are all involved in mankind in some way. Uh, and I think that uh, there is a Samburu uh, tribe in Kenya and their greeting translates to, uh, if you don't see me, I don't exist which is part of me existing is the part of you seeing me and validating and recognizing who I am. That means recognizing who I am, who I love, what I believe. Um, for me, uh, Senator Renfro, I, I, I too feel called to be in this chamber. Um, and uh, for me, the great mystery of the Lord is the mystery of unconditional love. For me, it is as simple as John 4, 8, which is God is love. That is the most compelling and befuddling part of my own struggle with my faith because there are all the times where I feel moved not to have that be my first response. Uh, uh, that is certainly one of my weaknesses. Uh, and so when I think about, um, I think that we have been down this road before. Uh, I think the way we went down this road before was there was a version of this debate uh, which was in the Supreme Court in 1954 when the new Chief Justice Warren faced the Brown versus Board decision and the question was a fair one. Couldn't we just keep white kids and black kids separate if we really gave them all the exact same experience. I mean, if school one had all of the same computers, the same quality of teachers, the same walls as school two, wouldn't it be okay if they just both went their separate ways? And what Chief Justice Warren wrote in that opinion is he said, that separation, that refusal to recognize puts upon young black children a badge of inferiority. It makes them carry that badge of inferiority. And he said, that is even worse when that inferiority is sanctioned by the law. It makes that badge that much harder to carry. So I, I, was, I was sitting with a friend of mine who has a very young child last week. And as all people with young kids, you always go through different scares and hurdles. And there's always a new test of some illness your kid might have. Um, it makes me feel how steep the hill is just to get your kids safely to adulthood. And they were happy because the test came back negative and the child was okay. And, you know, and he said to me offhandedly, you know, we're not totally out of the woods. I mean, you know, my kid could still get hit by a car or you know, he could still be gay. And I stopped for a second and I said, would that be an issue for you? He said, oh, it wouldn't be an issue at all for me. I wouldn't care at all. But I just know that my son's life would be that much harder. It wasn't a matter of what he believed. It was a matter of what he knew his son would face on that climb. So I have three kids. I don't know if any of them will grow up to be gay. But I know if they do, the hill they have to climb is going to be steeper. It's going to be dealing with rejection and dealing with identity crisis and dealing with increased levels of suicide and bullying and all of the rest of those issues. I know that if one of my kid has that hill to climb, that hill is going to be steeper. I see no reason why the state of Colorado should put the sanction of law on making that climb even tougher. I'm proud to be a yes vote on Senate Bill 2.